God bless church. We welcome you this Sunday morning to be to come and become part of this uh, Holy Communion. Um, as we um, approach the presence of God, let us open our hearts. Let us um, come to Him with humbleness and humility so that God can really search our hearts of the hidden things and He can open the eyes of our hearts um, so that we can come to Him and be cleansed and be righteous in His presence. Before we go any further, I'll ask Jemima to uh, say a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for another new day today. Thank you for bringing us here and helping us to be in your presence. Um, pray that you are with us as we take as we take part in this Holy Communion. Um, be with us and thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and thank you for giving everything to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Um, just uh, an insight like uh, this uh, morning as we approach the presence of God. There's something that um, God put into my heart and I reflect back in the book of uh, Luke chapter 15. It's the story about the prodigal son, which I believe that uh, you guys all know about it. But, uh, you know, I was reading it uh, just lately and there's something that came to me is that after the, the younger son came back to the father and he confessed his sins, the father took him in, um, put in a new garment, new ring, new pair of shoes uh, on him and took him inside. And the thing that really caught me is that uh, when the older son came and the father approached him and, and tried to um, uh, reconcile his son with the younger one. And, and the funny thing is that uh, the father gave a big party and the younger son who had committed all these sins, uh, he was uh, forgiven, he was cleansed and he was in there enjoying the party with, uh, with the rest of the people. And here was this son uh, the older one that was with the father all the time. He had not left. He had not wasted the money and everything. But what I found is that um, this older son, he had a problem. He had bitterness against his brother and he refused to forgive him. He had a uh, uh, attitude problem. He was stubborn. As much as the poor father tried to reconcile and explain to the older son, look, everything here that is mine is yours. And, uh, and you know, you don't have to be angry. You don't have to hold all these grudges and bitterness in your heart. Forgive all those things. Let your brother uh, come back into the family. Come and enjoy the party. But, uh, you know, the, the son, he was stubborn. He refused to give in. And, and, and the, the end story is that uh, the father had to leave the son uh, with his attitude, with his stubbornness, and he went inside the room where the party was going on, where the younger son was in there. And what I found is that a um, lot of times we, we, we look at the practical sins uh, and, and we say that we have not sinned and we have not done this, we have not done that, and we don't need to go and approach God as much as we should. But then when we look at the older brother, he was there right beside the father but his heart was not there. His heart was uh, stubborn, his heart was hardened. And, and, and the, the sad part is that he missed uh, being part of the party that his father had given. He was not there in the celebration. And church, one of the things that we need, uh, like Paul says, is that, Lord, search my heart and see if there's any iniquity, if there's any sins, if there's any faults in my heart that you can cleanse me. And so today, this morning, uh, church, as we approach God's throne, let us open our hearts. Let us not come with uh, our self-righteousness. Let us not come with self-centeredness, but let us come with humility uh, and say, Lord, whatever and or how much I've tried, I know I have sinned against you. And, and I know there's sins in my life and I want you to please forgive me. I open my heart. So with that attitude of the younger son, whom the father forgave, um, we need to have that attitude. He said, I will go back to my father and ask for his forgiveness. And then when we see the father's character, he did not hold his son against whatever he did. He did not see the stench in the, uh, in the son's clothes. He did not see his uh, poor state. He went and hugged him and he welcomed him home. And church, God is like that. He loves us. And this morning he's waiting for you to come and approach him whatever your sins whatever your addictions whatever your downfall is he's able to love us and forgive us 
Amen. Um, and, and in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, God says that come, let us reason together. He was saying to Israelites who went into sinning, he said, come, let's sit down. And if you, you know, confess your sins, you will eat the, the, the fruits of the land. And God is giving the same invitation to us. Come, let us reason and reconcile and I will forgive you. Amen. I'd like uh, Jemima to read the scripture for us this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is, bro- which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in, whenever you drink it in embrace of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this morning we approach your throne, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love us so much, O God, that whilst we are still sinners, Lord, you gave your Son to to come and reconcile, Lord. Your Son came, O God, and He gave His life on the cross, Lord. His body was broken uh, for our sins, O God. The blood that was shed on the cross, Lord, to wash away our sins, O mighty God. This morning we come and we thank You from the bottom of our hearts. We thank You from uh, from a deep within our hearts uh, that you are the way that you made it possible for us to come back to you lord we were cast away because of our sins lord but you reconciled us lord you have cleansed us lord you wash us oh god this morning lord as we partake into this holy sacrament lord let it lord come into our body like a spiritual medication to cleanse us to wash us to purify us lord and lord to fill us with the power of your holy spirit lord i pray for those um, the, the spirit of oh God to come and be with us Lord Jesus in your name we pray Amen come church let us um, take part in the Holy Communion Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for your mercy and your grace Your word says we are not saved by our own good works, Lord. Only by your grace, Lord. Only because you love us, Lord. Only because you care for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you purify us and sanctify us, Lord. That you wash us, O God. That, Father, you give us the power, Lord, not to go back to sin, Lord. We break, Lord, every spirit of addictions, Lord. Every weaknesses, every rebelliousness in our body, O God. Lord, purify us, humble us, Lord. That we can walk and flow in the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, once again, we thank you for whatever wonderful work you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like the word we heard last week. You know, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, despite of our circumstances. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is establishing His His Ark of the Covenant right where you are this morning. So as you worship God, if you're sitting down on your couch right now, I just want to encourage you to get up on your feet this morning. Let's just adore uh, God and let's just worship Him this morning. You know, the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Hallelujah. You know, the, the you know, if we're not going to worship God, the Bible says that God can speak to the rock to worship Him and they will worship Him. Hallelujah. But God created you. You are the ground of His creation and He created you with a purpose that you will worship Him. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this morning. We're just going to join. We're just going to join the the mountains. We're just going to join all of the earth and we're going to worship God this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just welcome the presence of God among us this morning, Father. We welcome your presence this morning, Father God. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will move through at this online service, Father God. Lord, I pray that you will touch every heart this morning, Father God, as we come to worship you this morning. Let us worship you with a heart of gratitude, Father God. Let us worship you this morning, Father God, with the sound of praise, Father God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted to you this morning, Father God, as we worship you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, Yaramasi, Yaramasi, Kerere, Kerere, Kerere. 
Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, let us worship God this morning. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice to God this morning and let's just worship Him from the bottom of our hearts this morning. Father, we declare your greatness, oh God, in our hearts, Lord. We declare your promises in our lives, Lord Jesus. You are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. We magnify your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I just want to encourage you, church, this morning. Let us not hold back the move of the Holy Spirit. It's right there where you are. Hallelujah. Let's just break down tongues this morning. Let's break up in the heavenly language this morning. Let's just declare the greatness of God in our lives. Oh, Yadama, see, Yadama, we worship you, Yahweh. We worship you, Yahweh. We worship you, Yahweh. Father, we magnify your hope Jesus, there is no one else like you. I just want to encourage you this morning, hallelujah. You know, the, the, the word hallelujah, we often say it, but it's not an English word. This, this word is straight from the Hebrew context, hallelujah. And you know, the people that are trying to translate this word couldn't find the right explanation for it in English, so they left it as it is, hallelujah. And you know, the Hebrew language speaks that hallelujah is giving God the highest praise, Hallelujah. All the praise that belongs to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. And as we sing hallelujah this morning, we're going to give God the highest praise this morning. We're just going to worship God this morning from the bottom of our hearts this morning. Why don't you join with us as we sing hallelujah, Jesus. Morning. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Yahweh. Father, we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. Let's sing this morning. Hallelujah.
As your word says, where two or three gathered in your name, you will be in the midst of it, Father God. And as we claim that promise this morning, Father God, we felt your presence in the house this morning. And right now, Father God, as we're about to hear your voice, Father God, as we're about to hear you speak to us this morning, Father God, Lord, I pray for your anointing on your servants this morning, Father God, as we bring forward the message from heaven, Father God. Let our ears, Father God, be attentive to your word, Father God, and let us hear, Father God, open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual ears to hear your voice this morning, Father God. We give you all the glory and all the praise, for you are worthy to be praised, O oh God. And everyone shout, Amen. And everyone shout, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, church. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you, church. Greetings to everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus. It is wonderful to once again meet you on this online platform. I thank God that He has given me this wonderful opportunity to bring the word of encouragement to you today. I also thank our senior pastor, Pastor Sila and Sister Martha for placing their confidence on me to speak this word on this online platform. Church, before we get into the word, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we commit this time into your hands, Lord. And we pray that our hearts may be tuned to, uh, to the Spirit, O oh Father, that let your voice be heard in every child that is listening this, this word, O oh Father God. Father, I also pray that no kind of distractions come into our lives, but help us to stay strong, be focused on your word, and have a renewed mind and be transformed from inside out, O oh Father. I commit this time into your hands and I ask the Holy Spirit, God, to take control of this place, Father. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Church, I would like to speak to you about one of the important aspects of our spiritual life that we as children of God, as sons of God, need to practice. But before that, I would also like to bring across two challenges that each believer, each child of God today faces. Number one, it is the ignorance about the word of God or the knowledge of God. Well, 
As children, we do not want to be ignorant about the word, but the enemy always focuses and makes us to be ignorant because he wants us not to understand the word of God completely. He brings in so much of confusion into us that we fail to focus and prioritize word in building up ourselves. So what is it, why is it doing this? It is trying to stop us from understanding the rights and privileges that we as children of God has. Number two, the second important challenge that we face as children of God is being negligent. Why is it we are negligent today? Even though we know that from our preachers, we know that it is important to practice the word of God. After understanding the word of God, we still fail to put it into practice. Well, the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 25 says that Anyone who has learned the word of God or heard the teaching of the word of God, but he has not put into practice, it is foolishness. This is told by Jesus himself. Well, why did he say this? Well, when you do not put the word into practice, when you do not apply the word to your life, eventually we forget what we have learned. And when we forget what we have learned, it is very where it is possible that we may fall trapped to the enemy. As children of God, we know that we have a lot of provisions, the rights and privileges. Well, one of, I would like to name some of them. One of the things that we as children of God has is we have every right to overcome every obstacle the enemy tries to bring in front of us. The question I want to ask, how are we reacting to this enemy that is stopping us from overcoming that obstacle. As children of God, we have every right to hear the voice of God. But are we in constant practice of hearing the word of God? This is a question that we need to think. As children of God, you have the power to break every chain of the enemy. You have the power to overcome every stronghold of the enemy. But today, Many of our Christian brothers in the body of Christ still struggle with so much of stronghold of the enemy in their spiritual life. Why is this happening? As children of God, we know that we, we have the right to live under the manifestation of the word of God in the form of miracles, in the form of signs and wonders in our life. But are we today experiencing them? This is the question that we need to think. But more than that, God has placed authority and power to every child of God. Every child that he has chosen, he has placed an authority in them. I want us to gain this understanding because many of us either live in denial of this authority that God has placed and many of us do not even try to connect in the power that God has placed in our lives. Let me try and explain it to you today. As a, <clears throat> as a believer, when Jesus was there in this earth, we know this story. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus comes up and he says this, paraphrasing it. All authority has been given to me on the earth as well as in the heaven. What does he say? All authority, it is not some part of authority or it is not some area where he has authority. The whole earth and the whole heavens are under his rule. Authority means having complete control, not a part of it, but having complete control. Now, we know from the story that what we have read from the Bible, we all know as children of God, when Jesus made this statement, he was on the face of this earth. He was present here as a person himself. So when Jesus was here, the authority was limited to the place where he was. Suppose if he was in the house of prayer, where the signs and wonders follow him in the house of prayer or to the person he speaks to. But 
when he has to when he has to do another wonder he used to go he used to go to different places and preach the word and the signs and wonders have followed this is what the word of god says but after that we know jesus was lifted up and he is now seated on the right hand side of the father now the question is today is the authority only on the right hand side of the father this is a question we need to ask of course the highest seat of authority is in the right hand side of the father there are two people that are there one is jesus and the highest seat of authority and power are on the right hand side of the lord but let me ask you what do we do today to exercise this authority are we exercising this authority many believers in the body of christ today believe that authority is with jesus many people who know the word of god still go to jesus and pray to him to remove their problems to remove their obstacles to remove the sickness i am not saying that prayer is not important yes when they do that it is true that prayer is very important because it is prayer that keeps us connected with god it is prayer that transforms us it is the prayer that builds our relationship with god the question i am trying to ask you is how are we looking at the authority god god has placed in us now let me explain you this with two examples acts chapter 3 verse 1 onwards if we read we know this famous story when Peter and John were going to a synagogue to offer the prayers near the temple they find a man who is crippled right from his birth what does this mean this man was born crippled and he never walked and he was begging there when Peter and John approached him this beggar looked at Peter and he was with an intention that he would receive something from peter and john but peter goes with a different reaction and he says gold and silver i do not have but all i have i give you is in the name of jesus i command you to pick up and walk where the lame man the crippled man was completely healed now did peter when he saw the crippled man did he kneel down and pray to the lord to heal him no did peter shout out to the lord to heal him no all he said he used the authority that was placed on him and tapped into the power and released him from that sickness now another example in the book of exodus chapter 14 we see that there were israelites who were coming there were israelites who were walking and behind them they were they were chased by the egyptian army in the front there is the sea that is looking like a dead end now in that situation we know that from behind there is an impossible situation in the front there is a dead end there is no way there is a solution for this from behind death was coming upon them in the front they have no place to escape and in that instance these people started crying out to the lord and murmuring against moses this is what the word of god tells us but look at the reaction that our father had towards this he did not say my friends i am going to help you he did not say well i am so happy that you are praying to me all he said was why do you cry out to me all he said was why are you crying out to me just walk forward and lift up that rod in his in your hand and the whole problem that was lying in front of them became a solution it became a royal carpet for these people to walk through the sea and walk away and the egyptian army was dead but look at the situation here did they never took the authority they had in front of them god has already given moses that authority instead they went to god but god did not want them to cry out to them rather take that authority and walk forward today my question is what are we doing when a situation comes to us we might have a financial problem hitting us from our behind 
but in the front you will feel there is no no solution to it the job is going but you need to know there is an authority and a power that is placed in us which we need to access to which we have access to which we have the right and privilege to have connect to that authority many a times there may be a deadly sickness that is hitting us but there is no need to worry rather take that authority and walk forward there is nothing better than applying this authority to our lives amen <clears throat> and then let's move forward <clears throat> the word of god tells jesus is the head of the body and the body is us who are the children of god or the church who are the children of god now if we look at the book of first corinthians chapter 12 27 it says now you are the body of christ and individually members of it whereas Colossians 1:18 says and he he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning and also the first born from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy so it is clear from the word of god we know that we are the body of christ and jesus is the head now the head is seated on the right hand side of the father the head is now in the highest seat of authority who is on the right hand side of the father question if the head has the authority does the body also have an authority question if the head has the power does the body also has the power now let me give you a small small example suppose i want to drink this water and my head says take up this glass and drink this water now i need my hand to go and pick up and drink this water i can't my head cannot do it by by itself the only thing is if it wants to drink the water by itself it needs to put a straw and start sipping it in but the question today are we listening to the head who is our authority and it is jesus christ are we connecting to him to act according to what the head says many of us fail to apply the power and authority in our lives because we do not comply and hear to the voice of the head which is jesus christ who in the spirit form is still inside of us speaking to our spirits in order to apply that authority so that you might have a life filled with victory he wants us to be overcomers he wants us to be filled with victory he wants us not to fall as a prey to the enemy so he placed that authority well is it written in the bible many instances we have seen this being written in the bible let let me give you two places where it talks about it first in the book of colossians chapter 2 verse 15 it says and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a spectacle public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross jesus has already disarmed every kind of power every kind of authority we need to know this if an enemy comes and attacks us in the form of sickness if the enemy comes and attacks us in the form of a financial problem if enemy comes and attacks us in the form of some kind of challenge in our lives we need to understand its power has already been disarmed by jesus number 2 he made it as a public spectacle which means he does not have so much power that he used to have before because jesus made it as a public spectacle he made fun out of it on the cross number 3 he had victory over everything that the enemy had control so problems may come to us as as children of god sicknesses may come to us as children of god and challenges may come to us as a children of god but i would like to tell you church it does not have authority upon you 
It cannot stand you. You are more powerful than it. This is what the enemy does not want us to know. In the book of Luke 9, 1 to 2, it says, Now Jesus called together the 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal sickness. What does this mean? He says, when you exercise the authority, we are more powerful than the demons or the enemy. We are much more powerful than what the enemy can do to us because Jesus is the authority and we are his body doing continuous works and different functions and we are placed with the same kind of authority that Jesus had so that we will not fall as a prey to the enemy but we will use and exercise the authority and we will overcome every act of the enemy. Now, at the same time, he also gave us the power to overcome the sicknesses. He told you to lay hands and the people will be healed. Does that mean today when, when you have a problem in your house and let's say pastor is not there at that point of time and you want to speak to him, well, are you feeling frustrated and filled with anxiety at that time? Understand church, understand every brother and sister. I want you to know this, even you as the believer of Christ, even you as the child of God has the power to lay hand and heal them. But have you tried working on it? Have you tried connecting to the word and tried to practice it in, practice it in your life? If we do not practice, how do you know how to exercise this authority? Many times we do not want to try and exercise the authority because it requires effort from us. It requires us to spend time in the presence of God. It requires time for us to build us faith. It requires time to practice on it. We, we have become so complacent. We have become so comfortable. All we need is we will ask pastor come and pray for me or ask pastor to pray for us on the phone. But if he is in some other work, we start getting anxiety. We start f feeling frustrated that there was nothing that they could do. The question today is, are we ready to take up that authority? Have you tried applying this authority to your life? If you have not tried applying this authority, then there is a problem. You need to solve that problem. The problem is you need to take a step of faith, spend time in the Holy Ghost, build up your inner man, and then go forward and start practicing it. Everything starts with a small step. When you start applying it, you will start understanding how the power of God works in your life, how to tap into the power of God. But the question is, are we trying to practice it? This is the second point that I would like to bring to you. Now, because we live in the denial of authority, because we want to be in the comfort zone, we have stopped ourselves to focus on understanding that authority. And the enemy also is looking at the same thing. He does not want you to have understanding about the authority and the power. Why? The minute you as a child of God knows how to apply this authority to your life, how to access that power into your life, the enemy's position becomes unstable. He starts feeling insecure because you understood that you are more powerful than the enemy. You understood that the enemy was already disarmed and now the enemy starts thinking what it has to do and it has to live. But if it keeps you busy with the other things of the world, if it keeps you prioritized with the other things of the world rather than Lord, then he is able to successfully keep you under his control. The question is, how prioritized are you about God in your love, life? How prioritized are you in order to give that space to Lord to work with us and that we may overcome everything that the enemy attacks? Church, 
it is no point in leading a life filled with fear it is more important to lead a life with faith and faith in the word of god faith in the power of god faith in every act of lord because that faith will never fail you that faith will not allow you to drown it will always lift you because the word of god will always float but it will never drown so i want you to understand church you need to take up your word you need to spend time in the holy ghost you need to study the word and meditate on the word because that is what will help you now before before we come to the final point i want you to understand how to tap into the power of god let's read from the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 19 i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better look here apostle paul is speaking and he is telling that i ask the lord i ask god the lord of jesus lord of jesus christ to give you and me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that i may know him better now why does he wants to do that because when you know the lord better when you know how god operates you know how powerful you are now let's read the next point <clears throat> i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of the glorious inheritance in his holy people well can you see this what he says in the second word is he says that the eyes of our heart has to be enlightened how does this eyes get enlightened the heart eyes of the heart gets enlightened only when you keep meditating the word and when your heart is filled with the revelation of the word of god why does he wants our heart to be enlightened because we will know what is the will of god we will know what is the grace glorious inheritance that god has chosen for his people and then we will also know the power that god has now this power is for the people who believe in christ who believe in the power of god this power is meant for them now authority is the channel through which you can access the power of god without this channel we cannot access the power of god authority plays an important role how you tap into the power of god let me give you an example why paul was telling that you need to, you need to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation <clears throat> suppose for example if you say by his stripes i am healed you might keep on saying that by his stripes i am healed every day and you can still say sick you can keep on memorizing that verse declaring that verse into your life but you can still say stay completely out of sickness you will still be filled with sickness the same thing when the word of god from the head who is christ if he reveals that revelation into you and when you speak that word after the revelation has come into you the sickness has to go away the sickness should leave you that is why paul apostle paul was so much concerned about having the spirit of wisdom and spirit of revelation because it is the revelation that comes from god gives you the authority to tap and access into the power of god which has been already released into our lives it gives the authority a clarity on how to apply only when we receive that revelation now moving forward if we look in the book of ephesians 316 it says <clears throat> i pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith look strengthening your inner being this is very important the question is strength how do you strengthen your inner being 
the strengthening of your inner being happens when you are constantly exposed to the word of god meditating the word of god receiving the revelation from a word of god receiving revelation from god and and, and applying it and experiencing the power of god in your life that is why he is saying that you need to strengthen your inner man so that you are built up strong inside when a, when an enemy attacks you you won't fall faint to it but you will approach it with confidence and now the second part of it he says so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith what does that mean it requires faith for us to access and tap into the power of god it requires faith for authority to work in our life understanding and using the authority of god has given us the key so that the manifestation of the power of lord happens in our lives even as i close today church many of us might have fallen away from our walk with god many of us would not even tasted the authority and power of god there could be so many reasons why we would have fallen away it could be because you were confused with the way the word has taught you it could be because you are so busy with what is happening around you in the world it could be because there are so many problems that are pounding upon you and as a result you compromised with the world and started falling away from god and today i would also talk to those people who are viewing our online service if at all if god is speaking to you today and if you want to experience the manifestation of god in your lives i want you to once again to reconnect if you have fallen away and if it is the first time that you want to give your life to god this is the time i want you to take this opportunity you do not know how powerful the lord our god father in heaven is it is important for you to connect and experience it but before you connect i want you to know this you need to come with a prayer of repentance with a heart filled with humility that i cannot do anything without you all these days i have sinned lord today come into my heart you need to come out with this prayer the bible tells us in the book of romans if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that jesus christ died and raised he died for my sins and he raised back and he is still living and if you confess with your mouth that jesus is the lord of my life you will be saved and if you confess with your mouth i have sinned and fallen away god will once again connect because his hand is big his hand, his heart is merciful his heart is kind and he wants you as his child he wants you to be a to be a good working partner with him because he needs you to accomplish his purpose and that is the reason he has created you and me church let us raise up and let's pray to the lord as we close this service and i would like you to repeat for those who have fallen away who has who is giving their life to the lord this prayer after me father god in the name of jesus i commit my life to you father Father I have fallen away from the life that you gave me and Father Lord I have never known you and understood you but today Father I repent of my sins and I ask you to once again reconnect with me accept me as your child and I would like to follow you I would want to be connected with you. I ask you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Church, one final thing before you go. Whatever you learn, it is more important to practice. I want you not to be disgraced about the situations that we are going through, but be encouraged that God, our Lord, 
who is the highest seat of authority is with us and with him we can overcome everything in our lives i give the lord all praise and glory and i pray that god may bless this word in jesus name we pray amen god bless once again church uh, thank you for joining us on our long, online service this morning um, just uh, hope and pray that you are encouraged and blessed um, by the word of God this morning. So um, just um, some few notices for our church family. Please your tithe and offering. Um, see the, the bank details below. Um, as the word of God says, the Lord will bless those who give with a cheerful heart. So give with a cheerful heart and God will bless you more. Um, also, just a reminder um, for our prayer meetings and our Bible studies on Wednesday on Zoom. Please, church family, I know that we all say that we're missing each other, but now is the opportunity for us. There's still uh, Zoom available for us to fellowship. Not only that, but we can pray together and um, study the Word of God. Um, also, please continue to keep our, our senior pastor, Pastor Sila and Martha and Gabby, as well as the whole family uh, during this time. So have a good week and may God bless you. Amen.